Hi there, my name is Ashley Carter. I'm a real estate broker here in Lincoln Park, and my business partner and I, Jim Shannon, Jim's been speaking with your colleague that's assisting you with selling the home on Fremont, and uh, we understand very directly that <clears throat> it's been a bad ride so far and that um, you're not interested or willing to um, commit to a broker right now, and, and we can certainly relate to that emotion. Um, However, what we wanted to do uh, is hopefully you'll humor us and play this video back. Uh, we've put together a proposal that um, might cut through some of the experience you've been through and help kind of give you a plan that you can feel confident about on the other side. So I'm going to jump in in hopes that, uh, that you play this back. So this is a, our five steps to success, which we're going to have to cut as an abbreviated piece um, in your situation since we haven't had an opportunity to meet yet. So clearly um, there hasn't been, uh, or we don't have a situation of mutual trust at this stage in the game. And I'd like to apologize for my colleagues um, in the industry and just the, the whole experience that you've been through so far. I'm sure it's been very frustrating and disappointing at the very minimum. And um, what we're gonna outline for you is more of a strategy and a formula for uh, how to get you what you're looking for and um, not make any more promises about what we can or can't deliver. Uh, and I think you'll see a nice difference in that. So, um, you know, we typically would also review clients' motivation. Um, we'll just take it, suffice it to say that you are ready to sell and that your motivation is high because you have gotten to this far in the process. So we can find out more about that at a later time. Uh, the things that we want to cover with you that are really important um, is that we would agree on a pr pricing philosophy, so not just a price. Um, that's an important distinction that we'll make and go into more detail on. Obviously, we'd need to agree on a marketing plan with your input, and uh, perhaps the one thing that maybe you haven't had is open and honest communication. So we haven't met yet, but I would like to ask in advance, uh, for your permission to be honest and candid with you. Um, probably at a spot in the process where um, not having great and clear communication is uh, something that won't help the process any further. So I'm gonna jump right in. Um, so <clears throat> here's uh, what we would believe. There's probably a perceived issue with the property and you would, you would kind of shout it out loud and say, obviously, dummy, we don't have a buyer yet. Um, I would or we would take a slight different take on that and suggest that the actual issue right now with your Fremont sale is that you actually don't know where the market is for the property. Um, and that, you know, you're not going to be able to make a clear and concise level headed business decision until you actually know where that is. Um, and the process you've gone through so far hasn't helped you get there. And so I um, want to discuss that, but finding the market is the most important part of selling the property in general is that so you can actually make a decision, are we willing to sell and what are the steps to involve? So a compounding issue of not actually knowing where the market is for the property is it's clouding your, your way forward. Uh, it's unclear how long it's going to take. It's unclear what the steps need to be. It's unclear on what we need to do differently to get this done. So I, we can certainly relate to all of that and we wanna cut through that clutter for you. Um, so our goal in this process would be, if you hang in there with us, is to assist you in helping determine the actual market value for the property, to assist you in alternative plans if, if for some reason you choose not to actually sell the property. And uh, we won't know that until we get into further discussions, but that, that could be a distinct possibility that you make that decision. Um, and also assist you in making an educated, informed decision on what your range of options will be. So those would be our goals in this process is to get you on to a position where you're uh, empowered to make a sale decision if, it, if, you know, if that is the choice you make. <clears throat> so I want to cover a couple of misconceptions that we run into all the time in the marketplace and, um, you know, kind of debunk a few of those uh, for you as well. So it's not uncommon that we hear uh, out in the marketplace that our marketing needs to be better <clears throat> or that our marketing needs to be different the right people are not seeing our house and that, um, you know, we don't really want to commit to a broker at this point. We just, you know, please just bring us a buyer. Um, certainly we understand that uh, feeling and emotion and not wanting to be trapped in, in another potentially bad situation. Um, another misconception that we run into a lot is that agents actually create demand 
for homes in the process of selling. And I would just tell you that agents don't create demand. Demand is in the marketplace already for properties. And it's our job to navigate you through the waters of the supply and demand and uh, help connect you with the right buyer for your home. And the, the final one that we hear a lot is, uh, or that we kind of see in practice is that it's not uncommon people who are selling their property just assume a buyer will just make me an offer. I probably would entertain it, just make me an offer. Well, <clears throat> I'm here to tell you for selling real estate for the last 21 years that that's not how American buyers think. They don't just make offers. Um, they need to feel like the property is um, a reasonable value or valued in the range where it should be to um, start the process. And it's not our culture here to make, you know, uh, wild or what be, could be considered aggressive offers. It's just not part of the culture. And we don't see buyers do that by and large. Um, you know, it's just not part of what we do. Um, <clears throat> so factors that do matter. Well, supply and demand is the biggest one. I have experienced for the last 21 years that uh, I feel like we can take our eye off the ball as sellers sometimes and, and agents as to what it actually takes to sell a property. And homes sell based on supply and demand and good old American consumerism, just like every other product, where if it's a car, whether it's a computer, whether it's a home, um, any sale is the buyer on the other side of that transaction is a consumer and they're looking for the best value possible. So buyers buy value. And what does that mean? Well, it means if you can imagine the um, imaginary wad of cash in their hands and they're looking comparatively at property A versus property B versus property C, D, E on down the line, and they are simply looking for the best comparative sale of that they can find in the marketplace. They don't know us. They don't know any of the history with the property. Um, and frankly, they don't care. They are looking for the best deal for themselves. And um, they will make a very pragmatic decision about value based on their combination of factors. It could be bedroom count, bathroom count, condition, or layout of the property, school district, um, <clears throat> overall square footage. Could be lots of different things. Uh, and every buyer has their own set of determinants for value, and they're going to be different from buyer A to buyer B. So value is in the eye of the buyer, and yet uh, they know it when they see it. So factors that also matter in order of importance, price. Price is the single most important factor that we can bring to the table when we're selling a home, and the Factors two, three, four, and five are not even close. Price is the single most important thing, uh, but in order of importance, the next one is the condition and the layout of the property. And the third one is the exposure slash marketing plan that gets implemented to make sure that enough people are seeing the property and that we've taken care of price and condition first. <clears throat> the other factor that I don't believe is common knowledge with home sellers is that Statistically speaking, in the U.S. housing market, 90% of all buyers will have a real estate agent engaged in the process to represent them. And so it's important that we understand who we're marketing to and the process that we're going through as your seller's agent to get it done is, um, you know, a big part of that is who are we talking to? So what's it going to actually take to sell your home? Well, very simply stated, you have to adopt an appropriate pricing strategy. And it's a strategy, not a price. Um, <clears throat> we need to confirm and secure the condition. Is there anything that needs to be done to the property to make it absolutely uh, in line with expectations for the current buyers in the current marketplace? Um, we then need to launch the exposure campaign, marketing campaign, whatever you want to call it. We like to think of it as exposure versus marketing. Um, inside of that campaign will be two most important functions. One is an agent-to-agent -agent communication plan. I just covered that 90% of the buyers that will actually buy real estate will have an agent. So we need to make sure that the agents know about the property and, and the appropriate agents know about the property. And then we also have a general public communication plan for the quote unquote other 10%. So for the 10% of buyers that don't actually have an agent or will choose to move forward without one, we have a plan for those folks as well. And then the fourth step in the process to actually get the property sold is do we have to monitor the metrics? What are the metrics? Well, I'll cover that in a second. Um, and we need to adjust appropriately. If we're off of the metrics, we have to respond in an appropriate time frame and then with an appropriate increment. Um, so here's the metrics that matter. 
So statistically proven, the National Association of Realtors has been studying this for the last 60 years or so. And simply stated, a property is proven that it's priced too high for the current market if you don't receive an offer after 12 agent hosted showings. An agent hosted showing is again, those nine out of 10 buyers that have an agent already engaged. They're walking into the property arm in arm with their agent and they're scheduling to see the property as a specific appointment. It does not mean an open house attendee, um, but it, they've actually scheduled on their calendar a special appointment to see the property. If we don't have any showings in a two week time period, okay, that's another sign that the property is likely overpriced, the market is not responding. And if we can't get to 12 showings in a 30 day period, uh, you're also not presenting the right value for the marketplace. Um, two major things that I see um, agents and sellers um, consistently do that's a misstep in the marketplace is if they're wrong on their pricing, they don't adjust in large enough increments and they take too long to adjust. The market for real estate in, in the US and specifically in the Chicago market is a very, very efficient market. There are 30,000 plus real estate agents in the greater metro area. There's tens of thousands of eyeballs on these properties literally every day. And if we're not getting the right traction, then we have to uh, make sure that we're making the appropriate adjustments. So price adjustments need to be as a minimum in the range from three to 5%. If you're over $2 million, it's a 5% adjustment. If you're under that, it's a 3% adjustment. And so um, it's very common in the real estate market to make an adjustment that doesn't actually move the needle. It's simply, you're still communicating to the same set of buyers that already were aware of the property before. So that's a huge mistake. Um, <clears throat> So the other thing that's very typical or in commonplace and, and of interest to people who are selling their property is the feedback. What they say, what they think, what do they, what what they say about the property. So, my perspective on the feedback is that the feedback is the actions and not the words. What are they actually doing, not what are they saying? Okay. Specifically, have they scheduled a second showing? Have they? Um, inquired about additional info. An additional info question would be, tell me again how the parking works. Tell me again about the storage. Tell me again about the age of the mechanicals. Tell me about the age of the roof. Those are all typical buyer signals and questions that agents will oftentimes have before they step forward with an offer. And um, the worst part of feedback is, is that it gets misinterpreted a lot. So for an example, if an agent, their buyer come through and say, well, it probably showed well and it's priced about right. What they're actually not telling you is we are not buying it. That's not what they're saying. They're telling you there's no yard. They're telling you there's no, the parking isn't big enough. They're telling you there's too many stairs. They're telling you whatever they're telling you. All right. There's a fill in the blank. The reason is and the problem with that is that's not true. The reason is that they don't see a value in the property where it's priced for what it is. Plain and simple, but there's always a reason given and it's never the actual reason. Um, so feedback is what are they doing, not what are they saying. So our specific pricing strategy for your property would be, I know you've been over $2 million uh, and it's fine to stay in that price range because once we implement the appropriate strategy um, we would make if we don't respond we don't get the response from the market that we want which is uh, an offer within 12 showings then we would be making a five percent adjustment until we drop under two thousand two million dollars and then we're going to pay attention to whichever comes first 30 days or 12 showings okay so if at the 30 day point, we don't have a buyer in hand, we're gonna make a 5% adjustment. When we drop below $2 million, the adjustment increments are reduced to 3%. We're gonna reset the clock, and then we're gonna be 30 or 12 again, all right? So we're going to continue that process on an increment, and every time we're readjusting the clock or we're relaunching the marketing plan at a new price, um, we will find the market. It's 100% guaranteed. There's no chance we won't. 
and you as a seller get to decide if you're willing to accept or confirm the price. You have every right to not sell. Um, however, the current problem that you have is you don't know where the market is. This process will find the market and then you get to decide if you're willing to accept it. So <clears throat> from our perspective, we encourage our clients to be in it to win it. The system of homes, getting homes sold actually works. It's a formula, it's not a magic wand. And the flow of traffic is our exposure campaign kicks in, we get to first showings, which oftentimes leads to second showings before an offer is made. We have to negotiate and get the property sold. So the benefits of this approach are that it's focused on you and your goals. It's not focused on the agents telling you how great they are. Um, the track record of results that we've built using this process with properties of all types for the last 20 years is that when we compare ourselves to the average agent in the marketplace, we wind up selling properties for 5% more money than they get and 18% faster. And the good news is this approach works in any market and with any property type. It doesn't discriminate. And our approach will work for you too. Uh, best part is no more program promises. I'm not here to make any promises to you, except that when we implement this strategy, that you will find the market and then you get to decide if you want to proceed. You're under no obligation to say yes to that buyer, um, but at least you'll know where the market is and then you can make an informed transparent decision moving forward if it makes sense for you to sell. If it doesn't make sense, we would be uh, planning ahead to assist you with what your other alternative plans are. Do you keep it and rent it? Do you put it on a short-term rental program? Do you look for other creative alternatives that gives you an outcome that would be satisfactory? Um, or do you just stay and decide that the move is not on? Those are all the parts of the puzzle that we don't know the answer to right now because we haven't had a conversation or haven't had an opportunity to have a direct conversation. Uh, hope you take the time to listen through this and that it's a logical, straightforward, no BS approach to the process. Love the opportunity to meet with you and um, hope that that might be something that you would value. Uh, I'm Ashley Carter along with my partner, Jim Shannon with Keller Williams, Chicago Lincoln Park office, and we hope to see you soon.